Anyone who got in trouble at school for copying somebody else's homework will have heard the spiel about how taking shortcuts means you don't learn anything. Yet Aston Martin claims that, by running what was effectively a clone of the 2019 World Championship winning Mercedes W10 for the last two years, it has learned a huge amount that will only make the 2022 car stronger. Technical director Andy Green goes as far as saying that the whole exercise opened our eyes, with a team formerly known as Racing Point actually expanding its knowledge base thanks to what some have dubbed a copycat car. 2022's new regulations mean Aston Martin will race a clean sheet of paper design that is all its own work this year, save for the parts it is permitted to take from Mercedes. This means the success of the 2022 car will be the acid test of whether it really did gain from following the Mercedes lead, or if its two years of cribbing means it has lost the design and development edge that made the team one of F1's great overachievers. The so-called pink Mercedes caused quite a stir when it was unveiled by what was then called Racing Point at pre-season testing in 2020. The resemblance to the 2019 Mercedes W10 was unmistakable, and the team wasn't shy in admitting what it had done. F1's regulations prevent full-on customer cars, meaning that the all-important aerodynamic surfaces must all be a team's own work. That means that no design data can change hands, meaning Racing Point went about this process using photographs, including some very clever 3D cameras and computer software, the use of which has since been outlawed to reproduce the car. When it started work on the clone way back in June 2019, the early versions of it produced less downforce than its existing car. But the team was careful not to take off in a different direction, and focused on understanding and optimising its clone. It did a very good job. The 2020 Racing Point was the third fastest car on average, with Sergio Perez winning the Secure Grand Prix to help it to fourth in the Constructors' Championship. There were question marks hanging over the car, which was protested by Renault. Although Racing Point was found guilty of using intellectual property illegally, thanks to its utilisation of the Mercedes rear brake duct design, resulting in a 15-point penalty and €400,000 fine, it was effectively exonerated for its copycat car. The rear brake ducts were only illegal because the team had not run the design the previous year, and brake ducts became listed parts for 2020. The teams that objected to what Racing Point did eventually dropped their threatened appeal once rules were changed to prevent teams producing such extreme copycat cars in the future. The COVID-19 pandemic meant that what was originally conceived as a one-year lifespan for its copy was carried over for a second year. Aston Martin diverged more from Mercedes in 2021 by necessity, despite being able to take the 2020 gearbox and rear suspension as a free upgrade without token spend. Instead, it spent its tokens on the monocoque. The set of four small but significant aerodynamic rule changes, notably the triangular cut in the edge of the floor, hurt the low-rate cars run by Mercedes and Aston Martin. With its primary focus on the 2022 car design, Aston Martin wasn't able to match the pace of development of front-running Mercedes and endured a difficult season. It slumped to seventh in the Constructors' Championship and was well off the pace, with regular complaints about what Aston Martin saw as the incorrect process used to make those changes in the first place. We'll get on to what Aston Martin did or didn't learn in a moment, but first thanks to every single one of you who is watching. At the race, we can only do what we do because you're watching our videos and hitting like if you find them interesting and illuminating. Heading into what should be a thrilling 2022 season, we have got plenty more videos we're working on, so make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss anything, and perhaps even chime the notifications bell so you know the moment there's something new to watch. Broadly speaking, there are two schools of thought on the wider impact of the Mercedes copy. One is that by following another team's path you risk weakening your own technical capabilities, but the other is the one argued by Green, that it broadened the team's knowledge base significantly. While it is true that Aston Martin was saved the trouble of coming up with its own car concept and evolving that, with the example set by Mercedes signposting a clear development path, in order to do this successfully the team did have to understand how the car it was copying worked. In doing so, it had to adapt from having previously run a relatively high-rate car prior to 2020, before switching to the low-rate concept. That makes it the only team to have run towards both ends of the spectrum in terms of rate level in recent years, which will have broadened its knowledge base. Such is the aerodynamic complexity of Formula 1 cars that it's not enough simply to copy what the other team is doing, it's essential to master the subtleties of it in order to make the car work. 
And it's that knowledge that is at the heart of the long-term benefits of this approach that stretch far beyond the short-term gains of giving it such a competitive car in 2020. There are also examples of the team diverging from the Mercedes approach. When the 2020 Racing Point first appeared, it featured narrow sculpted vanes on either side of the chassis. Later that season, it began to diverge more from Mercedes with the upgrade package it started to phase in at the Tuscan Grand Prix that included a modified floor and side pods. This introduced a more pronounced ramp at the rear of the side pod while the package also featured modified brake ducts. And for 2021, it was necessary to diverge even more. After all, the set of aerodynamic rule changes meant that Aston Martin had to modify its floor without the benefit of having seen the Mercedes version. So while the unsuccessful Aston Martin AMR21 was still very similar to the Mercedes, the team did have to do plenty of its own work. And while it didn't have as much success in re-optimising the car as Mercedes did, Aston Martin had less incentive to do so given the importance of the new technical regulations for 2022 and the fact it was mired deep in the midfield. Because this year's car will be a clean sheet of paper design, Aston Martin has had to come up with its own concept and direction. Although it will have a little in common with the Mercedes, given it uses the same power unit and gearbox, the car will effectively be Aston Martin's own work. This will be the key test of how much Aston Martin really has learned. The 2022 car will be the result of the knowledge and understanding it has built up over the years and prove whether the team's eyes really have been opened by its copycat strategy. The team itself certainly thinks so. But there are those who suspect it might not be the case. The racist Gary Anderson has questioned the approach, fearing the way of working it has adopted diluted the technical strength that made the team into a giant killer in the Force India and Racing Point days. This year's cars will be a stern test of every team's understanding of the underlying science that goes into designing and developing Formula One cars. While there are no doubts about the quality of the personnel or the ever-improving facilities at Aston Martin, the quality of its first genuinely in-house car concept since 2019 will give a clear idea of the progress the team has made under the leadership of Lawrence Stroll. Aston Martin hasn't been backward in coming forward with its F1 ambitions, which are to emerge as a world championship winning force. Stroll has invested significantly in the team, which is spending up to £200 million on redeveloping its Silverstone headquarters and building a new wind tunnel, as well as launching an aggressive recruitment drive. This has ruffled the feathers of some of Aston Martin's rivals, particularly Red Bull, which continues to make life difficult in the recruitment of Dan Fallows. But as well as the senior positions, there has also been a recruitment drive on what can be called the shop floor, strengthening the team throughout. While this process is ongoing, the team does now have more resources not only in terms of budget but also personnel. So the 2022 car will be the product of a bolstered technical structure that has focused as much as it can on that project. However, former team principal Otmar Safnauer, whose departure was announced earlier this month, said last October that the struggles of 2021 did have a knock-on effect on the new car. This is because of the extra work that went into developing the Aston Martin AMR21 in the first part of last season thanks to the losses of the rule changes. The team has not set precise expectations for 2022, although it will be expected to do far better than the seventh in the Constructors' Championship it managed last year. Lawrence Stroll has laid out a timeline of three to five years to emerge as a title contender, although he will surely expect that progress to come towards the low end of that estimate. For 2022 to be considered a success for Aston Martin, it will at least need to be a contender at the front of the midfield and be able to fight for points finishes consistently, as well as bagging the odd big result. But with Red Bull and Mercedes heading into the season as F1's two top teams, Ferrari and McLaren on an upward curve, and Alpine expecting a big step, Aston Martin needs the AMR22 to hit the ground running to deliver on that. It has continuity with its drivers, with four times world champion Sebastian Vettel staying on alongside Lance Stroll, and will be operating at the limit of what the cost cap allows. It also has the facilities it needs to be competitive, even if it will take a few years for the infrastructure improvements to pay off completely and make it into a potential title contender. But ultimately, it will be the knowledge that the team has, or has not, accrued technically during its two years running a Mercedes clone that will be decisive in its ability to take the necessary first step towards the front in 2022.